Hello everybody, it's Michelle Cahill here with Pet Portrait Fun, and today we are going to be doing a little bit of a pet portrait of this cute little French Bulldog. Um, basically, I somebody sent me a picture, uh, Devin sent me a picture of his cute baby pug, baby French Bulldog. I drew it up, traced it onto watercolor paper, and uh, now we're just going to go ahead and start painting him in. So you can always join. Um, I sell do-it-yourself kits if you want uh, me to ship everything to you, or we can uh, do them live. I hold them in Central Park and at the Barking Dog on the Upper East Side. Anyway, so let's get started. I'm going to be doing, starting with like the pink sections of the little guy, like his ears and his mouth. So what I did before, just take my wet paper towel, I got my uh, paints here, some water, and I dripped a little bit of uh, water into each of the paints before. So I'm taking a little bit of the red, a lot of water. Water is your white. Always say that. And remember, your paper towel is your friend. That's kind of like uh, helps you with uh, erasing the, the color. So let me see. Actually, he's got a little bit of purple in there too. So I'm gonna add a teeny bit of purple because he's he's got darkness in him. So I just kind of do a little bit light. This is um, and a lot of dogs have that pink in their ears. So I'm just going to fill that in. We'll go back over that part later with the darker areas. And he's got a little bit of pink around his eyes, right up, right around here, and a little, little face dirtying it up. So this is kind of the under layer. I do a little bit of this first. Um, all the lightest colors I start. In watercolor, you want to start with the lightest colors. See now, that looks, it seems like, oh my god, that's so pink. It's so crazy pink. I'll show you a little trick that I always do. I take the, you're almost kind of staining the paper. You, you let it on there, and then I take my wet paper towel. It's a little trick. You just kind of dab it off gently. It just gets that perfect tint of pink, that light pink. I do that a lot with uh, dogs' tongues as well, because uh, you don't want to make it look like they just were licking a, a lollipop. So you just kind of just get that little bit of pink. And same with the ears. Just See how that uh, paper towel is just dabbing it, pulling out a little bit of that pink. All right. So, and he's got a little bit of pink on his toes too. So I'm gonna continue on that all the little pinky areas, a little bit here. His little toes shows that they're alive. So he's got a white chest. So um, I always say leave the, anything that's white. Leave that as the paper. Paper is the whitest you'll ever get anything in watercolor. Okay, now he's got this uh, purpley bow. Um, I don't know if I want to start on that or let me let's start on him. He's he's brindle, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my brown, mixing it in there, and just a little bit light brown. I'm gonna do that same kind of look, uh, same thing what I did with the pink, because that's a little dark. I'm just gonna give him some some of that brindle. It doesn't have to be exact, you know. It's it's your painting. You know, especially with brindle, it's very, you can't really get it exactly like the way the fur looks. Just indicate. Um, it's got a little bit of that. You see, a little bit around his face. I'm just, just going to add a little bit of this brown and then kind of pull it back out, just like what I did. A little bit of brindle in here. A little brindle. And same thing again. Just take your paper towel, dab it out. Actually, that's kind of neat. It, it gave it uh, a little bit more brindly under undertones. <laughs> Same with the eyes too. Okay, so now let's get into. He's got kind of a darkish. Um, so there's black, and then I'm gonna mix a little bit of the brown with the black, and the black in. The, um, okay. yeah. So the black is usually um, in, this is a Crayola set. Um, I add a little bit of artist grade black because it has a little more pigment in, in it. So I'm going to start, this leg is pretty dark, so I'm going to start with that first. And just kind of, you don't want to go super dark right away. You kind of want to just uh, have a medium tone and then build up uh, black 
a little bit later. So make sure that you keep in that white chest for that area for the front. So let's fill up his his little feet here. Goes all the way down. So there's some shine in his feet too. So what I was going to do is going to fill the whole thing in and then go back over for the darker spots. Filling all the way up to his little toenails. There you go. He's a cute little guy. This is a baby guy. Um, so they're extra wrinkly, extra cute and squishable. They're so cute. French Bulldogs. One of my favorites. They're little characters. So now, and he's, he's a real character. He's got his little bow tie on. He's, he's ready for the party. So. Alright. I'm going to just fill up that chest all the way around here. Kind of pull that all the way around. I'm just going to kind of See, this again is just a mixture of a little bit of black and brown. It's a medium color, and I want to leave some of this uh, brindle in there. So you don't want to fully uh, cover up what you did earlier. I'm going to go around that bow because that will be like a, a fun purple later. <clears throat> so what's what's a nice little trick with, the, um, with brindle you could do is just, it's called dry brush. So when it's not super wet, you want to... Like take your paper towel and, and um, wipe your paintbrush down a little bit so it's not super wet, but you can pull up some. See, I'm just kind of. It's a little bit more dry, and I'm going into that brindle and get some texture, leaving a little bit of that. What I did before, a little bit of brown underneath. Yeah, so all the way up, cutey little doggy. So, we have these paint your pet parties now starting at, um, at outdoor restaurants that are dog friendly. And i um, love to invite anybody to come and join, to sign up online, and uh, we can paint your pet and bring your pet with you. So, yeah, you just pick some, uh, some of your favorite pictures of your pet, send them to me, email me, and uh, we can, I'll draw them up for you. And we can do a little bit of a paint your pet party. Sip and paint while you come back with a beautiful portrait. And it's very easy to follow. It's like paint by numbers because you're just kind of tracing what I drew for you. Which is a great technique because um, you're able to see what you're drawing and then go back over where you just drew with the pencil. Then you just go back over it with your brush. So it kind of, I say it's like muscle memory. You'll remember where you did your pencil marks. So it gives it a little bit of um, a heads up in your head. And it's really fun and relaxing. Everybody needs a little bit of entertainment now and something fun to do. So going back in, go over those lines. It's pretty dark back in here, so I just kind of go around his little toes. He's, he's got a little pink toes over here, so I want to leave a little bit of that pink I did before. It's a little dark over there, all the wrinkles. There's a little bum in the back. Yes. Yeah, we fill up in there, little guy. So, yeah, I have my um, paint your pet in Central Park the other day, and it was a beautiful day. It was uh, that little break in between this heat wave we are experiencing now. So we were, it was nice. We were under some, some trees in the shade and enjoying all the entertainment of that Central Park gives. It's full of life. New Yorkers are happy to be out after we've gotten through all our phases of quarantine. We are now somewhat back to what they call the new normal. So I'm going up into his, he's pretty light up here too, and I'm just going to drag in my brush out. That way you can spread out. It, it's a little bit lighter and filling up. Again, leaving a little bit of that pink. I'll dirty that up around his eyes in a minute, but just kind of wet, wetting this color that I have already to lighten it up. You see, I didn't even add any more color. I just added more water to my brush to lighten it up. And I 
you don't want to do a little bit more uh, pink, I'm taking that same dirty brush um, and just go a little bit, add a little bit of the pink. I don't want to go too dark though because his mouth, he has a little shine under his. So just kind of, see how that's a nice kind of dirty pink? And his little chin, his chin's pretty light here, he's got like a little, little goatee. Anyway, how are we doing here? Let me just fill out. They have these cute little square noses. They have, um, it's like two little lines. I always say a dog's nose is kind of like an anchor upside down. But these guys have it even cuter. They're like really, all those punched in noses on those, uh, any kind of bulldog breed. So I'm just going to wrap them there. Yeah, so... Left a little bit of that space. We'll go back into his eye uh, in a minute, but I still gonna leave a little bit of that pink because he's got these little pink patches around his eyes. But you don't want him to look like he's he's suffering from pink eye or anything like that. <laughs> so okay, filling it in. This again is just a little bit of black and a little bit of brown mixed up um, with a lot of water. So like I said, you don't want to go too dark. So this part's pretty dark right here. I'm just kind of filling up around his chin. Underneath his chin is pretty dark. I'm going to go right up to the edge of the bow tie. If you go over the lines of the bow tie or anything like that, your wet paper towel is kind of like your eraser. You just dab it and it'll come. the color will come right off. Watercolor is very forgiving. It's one of the most forgiving mediums. If you make a mistake, just a little wet paper towel, dab it off. There you go. He's got that white underneath so you got to so I was referring back to the picture. It's good to have the photograph there so you can refer to it. And his little, his little neck is up here. And he's got all these wrinkles in his... I'll go up, same thing around in his eyes. Just kind of doing a light, that same mixture, almost just filling it in. See how my brush is a little bit dry? I left a little bit of that pink around his, his mustache here. I'm just dabbing his nose so it stands out a little bit. Just taking. See, I use the I actually brush almost like an eraser as well. Just and so see how they I am get standing it over here? That's okay. Again, your wet paper towel, just kind of dab that off. But we'll cover that up. Um gotta figure out what color. You can do the background any color you want. It doesn't have to be like the photograph. Um, I always tell people, have fun with your background. That's where you can really let loose. You can make it like rainbow. You can, since there's all these colors in the palette, you can, you can really have a good, uh, have fun with all the different colors. Why not? But, because I use, I see there's a little blue up in the background there and then this floor is kind of this orangey wood. I'm not quite sure just yet what color I'm going to make that background. But whatever color you pick for your background, try to have it be opposite um, tone of your of your dog. So if you like, what I mean by that is, if you have like a brown dog, have like a a green or blue background, or if you have like a a dark black dog, that's kind of like. A cooler color you want to have a warmer color so flip flip the uh, the the warmth the warm and the cool if you have a cool cool colored dog have a warm background if you have a warm colored dog have a cool background if that makes any sense so I just got so I'm just gonna drag those little like fur a little bit in like To his chin. His chin's pretty dark here, so I want to fill that in, leaving that little white patch. Okay, so now the eyes, uh, the eyes are, a trick I always do with the eyes, I leave one little square for shine of white, and you want to try to paint around that, so you leave that little piece of white as the paper. Um, what I'm going to do is, is his iris, it's just kind of like a uh, 
they're, they're like really dark, dark brown, like an umber brown. So I'm just going to fill those, that little section in the whole pupil and iris, leaving that tiny piece of white. So at this point, I always say, um, try to have your, uh, the paints are a little bit more gooey, so they're not um, as runny, and um, you have a little more control over your brush. It's kind of um, like you're working with a magic marker or something like that. And now I'm doing my little doggy mascara, I always call it. Up and down. And remember, dogs' eyes are round. Um, they're not almond-like humans. They they go really up. So remember when you're painting your uh, picture or drawing a picture of your, your dog, remember to over-exaggerate that circle. Uh, try not to make them like what, what a human eye, like an almond color, I mean almond shape. They're very round. Making sure I don't go over that little piece of white I left there. Fill up his little, and then I left a little bit of white around his eye, a little bit in the corners there. So now I'm just going to drag a little bit of his fur up into his ears. A little bit, a little dry brush, furry action. So you don't have such a hard edge. And then I'll go back over. So what you can do on this part is, uh, once the dog's body is kind of getting more dry, you can go back over and follow those lines that you traced before. Just a little bit up there. And this is pretty dark in here, so fill that whole little leg in, pretty dark. Leave, up, leave that little piece of white there. Same with his belly, he's pretty dark in here. All the shadow goes all the way down. Let's get into his bow. And if your dog is wearing a collar or uh, a bow or anything, you can always have it um, removed. Like, you don't have to draw it. it. But this is so cute. Of course, you want to keep his bow. And there's a lot of detail in that bow. I kind of cheat a little bit. You know, I'm just going to... I like the purplish color, so I'm going to stick with that. But what I'm going to do is fill the whole color in um, purple and then go back over it with some darker purple stripes so it's not going to be identical to the drawing but that's okay that's what you know artistic license I say so I'm mixing a little bit of purple um, some navy have fun mixing your colors and I mix it in see I'm mixing in the palette so you can see what colors you're building up before you actually put it on the uh, paper so let's fill that in he's like oh, I put a little bit more navy in there Little buddy, he's cute. He's ready for his party. I don't know where this little guy was going. <laughs> he was going to a special formal event, apparently. Oh, see now this is dripping a little bit. That's okay. I just wiped all my my paintbrush here, and it's, I'm just kind of like sopping it up with the brush. Don't no worry, we'll go back over that in a minute. So yeah, if you're if you're and always do your uh, watercolors flat on a um, table because that way you don't have to worry that you're fighting against gravity like what I'm doing right now. So. Cute little guy. Nice purple bow. That's a good purple color. I might add that color into the background just so I tie it into the rest of the, the painting. I'm going to just fill the rest of it in, and it, and it goes all the way around. I'm just going to make it all purple. There we go. Okay, and we'll get back in. Let, let the doggy dry for a little bit, and let's start, start doing a little bit of the background. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to do this part like, like an orange, and I'm going to do a little bit of that purple. See, the purple is dripping in there. That's okay. Let's do, since I have the purple on my brush over it right now, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of blue just to give it another similar. That's about it. See, I'm just mixing different colors. 
People don't think that you can get real thick, um, brilliant colors with uh, watercolor. One of the, the tricks you got to do is wet them all before you start so that it activates them all. So you can get a really thick, gooey, um, solid pigment with watercolor if, if uh, the water's kind of been sitting on it for a while and really activates the, all the, the pigments. A little bit of that blue background. Add them to purple. I'm going around his ears. The best bet is to uh, do this kind of section when the ears are dry because they that way it won't blend in. Sometimes it bleeds if it's not dry yet. See, I'm just kind of playing with the my brush and I'm making it look like cloudy background. Sometimes the painting takes a life of its own. I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. Looks like it's like a <laughs> he's not in a living room anymore. I'm just gonna go around to his ear, to the edge. Gotta get rid of the white as this sort of he pops off. There we go. That's neat. Okay. And now I'm gonna go into the, the full background, I think. Let's do some orange. Mixing a few, there's a few oranges in here. There's uh, light ones, and there's like the darker ones. See, the more colors you mix together, um, you can get it gets more de depth in the painting. See how, like, when I go right up to the edge of them, that, that orange looks nice next to the purple. Little guy. Go up to the edge here. He's got shadow on her here, so we'll kind of like build up uh, like a, a darker. First, just fill the whole thing in, and you see, I just I just dipped it in water, and filling, just spreading out that color, and spread it out nice. And like if it like I said, if it goes uh, starts to bleed, it's okay. Just use your paper towel. Go back to that section when it's when it dries up a little bit. See, it's uh, still wet up there, so I don't want to. So I really like the way that that part came. So I'm gonna just go right up to the edge and leave a little bit of white. I'll fill that in a little bit. It's lighter up at the top, and I build it. I go down to a darker orange, so it gives it a little bit more the gravity of the of the uh, the painting. up with this lighter color. Yeah, the edge of his face is still a little wet, so I want to be careful if it does go in there. It's, and it's purple bow tie, too. You can leave a little halo around the dog if you want. Like, a little, some people leave a little bit of uh, space around it. That's all right, too. Now we'll go down to the, the darker, darker at the bottom like that. that really comes, makes him really pop off. Little man, little baby doggy, French bulldoggy. They're the cutest, aren't they? <laughs> Too. Painting is very relaxing. It was funny. I was talking to somebody in the park um, that we were painting, and she goes, "This has been so enjoyable because it's you know you really can't do you can't go to the movies. You can't do, there's a lot of things you can't do, you know. But um, painting in the park or painting at an outdoor restaurant is is one of the few things you can do, and it's a nice little way to celebrate something special like a birthday or anniversary or something." And especially if you get to bring your little buddy, we do cats too, you know, but you can't bring your cat to the, I mean, I guess you technically could bring your cat to the park on a leash. 
some cats do. It's New York, anything can happen. You'll see, you've seen everything here. But, uh, but the restaurants, I have not seen people bring their cats to the restaurants. <laughs> that I have not seen. But I wouldn't be surprised if one day I did. Okay, so we've been connecting that, going on his little feet. To the edge here, get up to his little belly, going to the went to the darker orange. Go back up in here since this kind of dried out a little bit, so I just kind of connect that a little bit. And the last little part is all the details of uh, old doggy, all oh, this is face. The the lines. This is where um, when you trace the drawing, the uh, all the lines that I did before come in handy now. And you can always refer to the to drawing, like if you've painted over and you can't see your lines, you can always line your uh, drawing, the tracing paper back on top of it just to kind of see where you're at. Okay, just a little edge. I'll go up to the edge later. See, there's a little bit of bleeding there. That's okay. I'm going to go back to that in a second. And it's okay to let things dry for a little bit. I, for the for this purpose, I'm just going a little bit faster than it, it, you should. You should let little areas dry a little bit. But um, I'm filling in his nostrils. This is where the uh, the anchor, I call it the anchor, moves the line straight down in his little, little mouth. And on top of his little nose, you just follow those lines. Here, little mouth. And uh, get those little whisker marks, a little few of them here, a few of them here. I'm going into the pupil now. Make that eye really stick out. Okay. Even that little piece of white, that's important. And then a little doggy mascara over his eyes. Gonna go back in, do a little bit more shadowing under his feet, under his belly. And a little bit, a few of those, his eyebrows. It's cute. I wanna go back over some of that. So it's not super, super pink. Just a little bit. I'm gonna keep the whole cover up completely. Got his old chin. He's very serious. He's a very serious little guy. Some orange back up on there. few more details like and you can go back over when he dries I can do a little bit more um, filling in his uh, the, f the fur areas and everything it's dripping over here I'm just going to take my paper towel Oop. go along the edge and some of the drips actually are, are cool and if that's not what you want 
See, that this is the gravity dragging it down. Um, I think it kind of looks neat. You can use it like that. So I'm going to let him dry, and I'm going to go back over him a little bit later, and just and I'll post the uh, finished version of him um, when it dries a little bit more. But anyway, thanks for watching. And if you want to order your do-it-yourself pet portrait fun kit, you can go online. Um, you can find me at www.petportraitfun.com and um, send me a picture of your pet and we will uh, draw him up for you, ship you all the things you need, and we can join you through Zoom or if you're in the city, we can set up a place to meet and do a private paint your pet party at uh, pet friendly uh, locations. And I will speak to you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.